how Jake or how Kron controls a game of Sigma. Just looking from timestamp. Okay, so we're gonna start at 17 minutes in. So the fact that Kron <clears throat> is playing in an LOL. Okay, so <clears throat> Jake knows his stuff. I think um, who is the other guy? Who's Uber? Who's Uber's partner? Chat on um, uh, casting. Mr. X. Okay, so I think Jake and Mr. X are like the only two educated casters. Let's put it that way. Like they know, they know, like they don't know everything about like the pro meta, um, especially Mr. X, but they're like relatively intelligent about like pro gameplay and how it works, like angles and like spam and ult economy and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but I think the rest of the casters are bots when it comes to stuff like this. And it kind of upsets me because it's like, Casting is like anything else, and it takes practice, and it takes time, and it takes training, right? You have to you have to practice it like anything else. But to me, a part of casting is also game knowledge, and not just, oh, this is how ults work, this is how positioning works, but like how the pro meta is. And I feel like casters would get so much out of just studying VODs a little more, or maybe even, like, I, I guarantee you there are Overwatch League teams out there that wouldn't mind a caster coming and sitting on the scrim. <clears throat> even in voice, they wouldn't care. I guarantee you. So it frustrates me when I see casters and hear casters like spreading these narratives about stuff that they just don't understand. Like I don't think Sideshow knows very much. I don't think Bren knows very much. I don't think like whatever the other ones, I, I don't think they know understand very much. So it's like, I think Jake is good. And I think Mr. X is good. <clears throat> and in terms of like actual casting competency, obviously there are lots of good Overwatch casters. I think, they're, but in terms of like actually knowing the game, I think it hurts their ability to cast. Like I would be, if, if Mr. If like Uber or like, um, like, honestly, even, like, Reinforce. I think Reinforce kind of comes across as plat chat super hard nowadays. So. Like, you guys saw the plat chat thing, you know? Like, I get it, it's, like, supposed to be funny, but, like, they got a... Their, their read on Jake's uh, super skinny was so bad. <clears throat> yeah, Wolf and ZP. ZP is very negative and, like, overhyped stuff, I think, sometimes. I think... Even Wolf and whatever his name is, I think those guys don't really know the meta very much. They like Koreans a lot, that's what I've heard, but they don't know the meta very well. Like, and it's not, again, it's, it wouldn't take that long. Just like, it's been like four hours a week. A week! A week! Go and sit in for two scrim blocks, and you'd learn so much. So much. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of, Kind of a bummer. And the reason I, I don't like it is because it pushes these narratives that so-and-so is bad, so-and-so is good, or they're playing it wrong. Or one of the, My most frustrating thing is, I don't know why they're playing this hero. They, they're clearly not working out. They should just swap. They sound like your teammates in gold. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is Boston playing a symmetric Junkrat? They're throwing. Terrible composition. Like, yeah, it's a kind of a mean composition, but it's actually pretty decent. It works. It's just Boston playing it, so it doesn't look that great. You know? Like... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. <clears throat> but that being said, there is a skill of casting. Like, if I'm being brutally honest, I don't think Jake is a great caster just yet. And I'm sure he will improve. He sounds very, like, uh, plastic to me. He knows his stuff, but his, like, delivery isn't super natural. At least yet. I'm sure it will get better. All right. That's where his Sigma, or his BAP can drone him. And at the same time... He gets the rock on the blade. Become a caster? That rock. Eh. Always rock. Uh, not really my deal. I, I, did, I did cast a uh, tournament a while back. Way, 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 way. And I had a blast. But, yeah. Reactive, guys. Always reactive with the rock. The one time that he'll use it... Junk sim. Junk sim is basically, we have so much spam, and we're just going to press W and run you over and spam you out. <clears throat> if you're within close to mid-ranges, junk sim crushes other comps like you can't even play like it's the only comp that can occasionally beat it is like a doom rush a doom rush can beat it pretty good but junk sim just has an immense amount of damage um and they're not diveable enough before they kill your tanks it's kind of a meme comp but it it works there's no angles um tracer is not very popular in oasis university the really the only thing that can consistently beat it is doomfist and yeah Pugs? Oh, maybe I, I keep forgetting. You guys may have to remember. Maybe we'll see Pugs. Maybe in the future. Is if he has the halt combo. But Doom and Widow. Not, yeah. Like he'll literally never throw the rock. He'll only shoot unless, unless there's that, um, there's that halt combo that looks good. And even when there's a halt combo, he might even hold it because 
What makes the rock so good is that when you have it in the bank, when you're ready to deploy it, that Genji and Brig have to check their aggression. So any time that you use it, you actually just create a window for the enemy Genji and Brig to get on you and get aggressive. Mm, Brig doesn't really worry about rock. If your Brig is getting rock, your Brig's a bot. Um, <clears throat> but for Genji, sure. So by simply holding it, Kron kind of is implicitly counterplaying. Well, you don't play it on Widow Maps for the same reason that you don't play it on... Because Widow Maps are going to be maps where there's more flanks and more space in general, which means you're going to see more... Genji's going to have an easier time dealing with it. Tracer's going to be more common. So it's not just the Widow, it's the fact that it's just more open in general, and that that comp is bad in open spaces. By multiple teams? Yes, I had I have multiple offers from good teams. I think they're good teams. Like a, a, just I was very, very, very lucky. Then you're an old bank for a while. <clears throat> See how he's trading here. Neither Sigma wants to come out. I think this. What's very low? When will announcement be? I haven't accepted yet. Probably this weekend. This is wise, actually. Both of them want to stay on the inside. Nobody wants to run across this open field. It's not really a good play. This is the first time I've seen him use the rock for just spam. I don't think that's actually good, but. It's not. Okay, chat. Why is it okay to use? Your, why is it okay to use your rock for spam right now? <clears throat> it's not. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. Video seems a little. I'll turn it up a little bit. Why is it okay to use rock at this point in time? Probably okay. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Like not even digging into the meta. You guys don't know this meta, but you know that you're probably the fight hasn't really gotten in yet right so like he's probably gonna have it by the time he actually needs it when the enemy team or his team is actually aggressing he'll have the rock right like ignoring okay sigma's using shift so you know maybe First i can rock that but like it doesn't matter like it's just the fact that hey i can i can rock and i can probably get it because there's zero chance that flood is going to go aggressively here at this point in time there's zero chance that there's a flux that i need to cancel there's zero chance that there's an enemy orissa inting into my back lane right Zero chance. I've seen him use His team is pressing point. Yeah. <clears throat> so it is a little. It is a little late, but it's not a hard end. The rock for just spam. I don't think that's actually good, but because I think the gun does more damage, but um, he just doesn't generally make that play. Well, you do it. Well, he rocked when the shield broke, so that he rocks. <clears throat> Sigma's knocked down. Yes, it does less damage than primary fire, but because the person is stunned, your team can shoot the target without them ducking behind corner because they're stunned. So even though the rock itself does less damage, in the same way that Brig Bash does less damage than a Brig Swing, Cap the Hustle thing of Fall, the Brig Bash and the, the rock CC the target so that then the follow-up damage is greater than the difference between the rock and the primary fire. He's doing a great job of using the pillars to maximize his efficiency though. Like he's not relying 100% on his shields and his cool he shift by the way chat if you're noticing that he keeps like shifting really early and like situation it does seem like a lot of spam the reason he's doing these shifts is because of this pick right here it's the widow he does the shift when he's low hp his shields are broken and he's within one shot range and he's between pillars where the widow might get a beat on him downs he's using these pillars on his right side and because he's winning that duel on the flank he's able to drop in let's look at that move a little bit Let's look at that move a little bit, guys. This is a good, this is a really nice move. That map positioning stuff, like this is the type of thing you can learn from on Sigma because it's very situational. But look at this moment. Look at this moment right here. He's got, he just used kinetic grasp and he did not get much on it. He just got 300 HP. He's got 150 shields. Like he is low, low, low on resources. This is like he's done maximum tanking at this point. Like he's used everything he has to tank. And he's going to use the last little bit of juice here. And he starts getting poked. And he's just like, no. But because, because he did so much work with tanking and taking the distraction, not only does Happy find the pick, which, you know, it's partly him, but obviously Happy winning the duel is huge. But um, because he's won this central high ground, he has the option to drop in. And now this position's not nearly as good, right? Obviously. But it's the place he can restore his cooldowns. It's where he can get healthy again. He can still have Shu. And, and he can reposition now. To sure. Him. So because he put himself out in that position, he had control so that he could drop down. Like, if 
if Krong had been here taking damage, he would have had to go back to here, right? <clears throat> and he just would have done absolutely nothing from this position. But because he managed to use the help of his team and win the center of the bridge control after a very long extended poke battle, that is what earns him the option to make this move now. That's true. That's fine. So that's just like a nice little thing. What, what, pat when it comes to what patch notes do I want my hot take on? Like, you need to get the map control that's going to enable you to survive the moment you don't have resources anymore. And now, like, resources are restored, and he's just he's just running at them, pretty much. He's great at just playing conservative when he needs to play conservative. Like, this hero is a lot less flashy than the Genji, so it's not about these little minor tips and tricks. It's It really is all about the positioning. And I love that now... Like, it seems subtle, but now, especially with the walls on, right? Now he pushes up, and he's constantly in this left side of the map, but he's pushing up like he's going to start getting value here, but, like, he, he's so conservative with this. Like, he's not going to force his hand. Just poke and back. He doesn't even want to commit his shield. Poke and back. You see that, chat? You see what he's doing with his shield? Okay, I'll check the patch notes once this is done. I'll even I'll pull it up so I don't forget. Don't let me forget, chat. Um, You see what he's doing with his shield? He's not even hard committing his shield. He doesn't want to let the enemy team poke down his shield and then push. He's just like playing very conservatively. I'll take a little bit of damage, but I'm not going to commit my shield resource. I'm not going to blow my cooldown before the fight starts. This is, by the way, the same concept of what we were talking about with Tracer earlier. It's the same concept. Same exact concept. I'm going to play this in 1.25, by the way. Poke and back. I mean, he's like, he's literally max shield HP here. He even breaks the Venomine. Like, he won't... <laughs> He could peek around this corner. He could walk around this corner and shoot, but he just won't do it because it puts him at risk of getting halted by the enemy Arisa. It's not just the halt. It's the fact that he would have to have a resources used to survive that encounter that then allows the enemy team... Like, the enemy team can just press mouse one, and he would have to use shield and shift. That's not a fair trade. But... Sorry, I'm going to skip back. Uh, the moment the moment they push in, he's immediately back. Like, he's peeking just to finish farming ult there, but he's he's maintaining all of his important resources he's not gonna just throw a rock and nothing he's not gonna use kinetic grasp he's not gonna put his shield out for more than like one second to put a shot out he's talking he's about it maintain his resources so now when shanghai actually pushes and his team needs his help for real he's got everything nice so, shake so, good point go. very good Jake. The rock beautifully done in this case also also notice chat how he starts off angled but in this meta because it's such a brawl centric meta on either side that as the push actually starts to go he actually goes back to his orissa now, this is something I normally don't coach Sigmas on because this is a very, very pro meta. This is like one of the few things about pro meta that is not really carryable over to ranked. But generally, the shields stack and that allows you to push uh, if you want to. Um, but you notice how he started off angle for early spam and then he goes back to his arrest as the fight evolves. And what does he have? Full Sigma shield. What does he have? Shift. What does he have? Full HP, right? This is good. This is timing is everything, man. Recognize, by the way, that there's absolutely no pressure on this left side. So if he just stays back here, he's like not going to do anything, right? In terms of tanking. Maybe he could spam, but he's not going to accomplish anything. So because he reads from, remember, looking from this doorway, he reads that Shanghai's going heavy left. On top of that, they did Versailles at the start, so it's really obvious they're all going to go. Shanghai's going to push from Shanghai's perspective heavy left. Stop spoiling it! No spoilers, chat! No spoilers. And so that means Kronk, he just wants to group with his Orisa and match. Because his team has defensive positions. They're going to have the ultimate advantage. All he has to do is match and survive. Let's slow this one down because I think this is going to be an important fight. Like, I could see him using Flux here very shortly. He's got no shield. Happy and fearless trade. Let's see. Has he got this? That's a hard one. He goes for it, obviously, but... <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? I think he's gonna die here. I don't think he's gonna get this off. Maybe he gets healed. Oh, healed in the air. Oh, that's so big. I think this is a great example of actually of, of using the flux here, guys. Because, let's go back. Because this is like a flux that went wrong and that he sort of saved, that he sort of clutched out. So let's analyze this flux again because it's obviously a very, very important part of Sigma's game. So when I believe... All right, so obviously he wants to cancel the enemy Sigma's ult because that's so huge if you get it. So he goes for this, but... Void's too smart, he flies back around the pillar. Yes, he has he had high shields to commit to the brawl because he didn't blow his cooldowns early in the fight. Whatever. But this Lee J Gon gets for sure over aggressive here. This is a mistake by Lee J Gon. He shouldn't do this. He should be on point fighting enemy big. But 
Lee Dragon makes a little error here and overextends and gets poked really hard by himself and the Arisa and maybe the Genji or something. And the reason he pops this flux, he pops this flux to, to try to finish the break. I'm quite sure that that's what his his mind was was directing him. I want to go finish the break with this thing. Like he just pops it like I want to use my old and close out on this kill, which would have been good. But the moment Lee Jae Gon steps around the corner, Kron realizes this kill is like not going to happen. Like even if he does get him, Bap is going to heal him. He's going to get droned on the slam. Bray won't die here. So what does Kron do? He's patient. He's looking around, and he waits. He finds his target, right? Like. He takes the duration of the ult to actually find the best target. Obviously, you can use this ability to like combo on a halt or whatever, get the whole team. But sometimes this late in the fight single target flux is like the best way to get kills. And you know, realistically, right now, like if you just force the drone out of this bap, that's probably the same thing that would have happened if you halted their whole team next to each other. Except if you did that and they all survive with the drone, then they would get a ton of healer ult out of it too. So in fact, sometimes the solo ult is actually better, despite what you might think, it's actually better than getting a big team ult on this ult, especially with a bap in the game that's just gonna counter you. Press W! Oh no. Alright, so then we get a bit of a retake here. But that that was costly for the dragons. It cost them their rally in the end of the fight there. Probably because Krong stayed alive through his flux. So Without the rally, I see this being extremely difficult to hold on to. No support else. Like a blade only against what charge have right now. This is gonna be a really hard fight for the dragons. Like this is charge for sure should win this. And once again, it's like a mid fight again. It's just a poke trade on the left side. He's working with his brig, like we saw him do in the last map. And now he moves out. As the bongo comes in as well. Void's doing a great job of being annoying, trading on this flank as well. But this fight's not going as well for the Chargers as they would have hoped, despite having ultimate advantage. Chara did not find the opening to rally there. I think that was just really nice positioning from the Dragons. Being evasive, being split up, so that there wasn't any single part of the map that Charge could just straight run at. Yep. Um, I do wish Chara found a way to get the rally out, but I think he might be trying to hold on to it to counter Blade. I just think that fight... If you're going to commit Supercharger, I would want you to commit more than that. Yeah, so that was a really weird fight. I agree with Jake. It's like, it felt like... Charge was respecting DM a lot because they weren't crossing space, they weren't really taking angles and flanks, um, or they weren't really pushing. Um, but it, it, like you committed bongo, man. Like something needs to happen. Like give up this side here if you need to, but push out this here, and then we can move from there. But like I, I find it really odd that Charge does this really, really neutral passive split when they have ultimates that they could just press W run. Like they have the rally, they have the window, they have. You know the the bongo. Why why are you playing as passive as you are? I, I, I don't understand. I think charge's plan there is really poor. They treated it like a really really passive neutral when they had a significant old advantage that they could have abused and they just didn't. Like aggressively and like make the supercharger really good. And like now and, na and now they do it. I don't understand why do they do it now? But they didn't do it when they had actual ults and. Like, so mostly because fearless is totally separated. Oh, fearless puts the bongo in front of shield. That's a pretty big mistake. Chat, do you see it? Did we literally talk about this? In front of shield. That's a pretty big mistake. You see it, chat? Do you see it? Do you see it? There it is. He's gonna block the window with Widow. Makes sense. Now he's eating. He's focused entirely on this Amp Widow because I mean the Amp Widow can just blow you up, right? So he's really worried about it. But now he collapses. Let's go back and watch this collapse. This is a very nice collapse. It's a very so nice collapse, chat. Very nice collapse. Well, let's look at the positioning. Beautiful right collapse. First thing I'm seeing is that significant advantage to charge here on the south side of the map. They've got, not only do they have a rally, which is like, you can't fight button, but they have both supports stacked and both tanks stacked. The only people on this side of the map are the DPS. And the Widow is like, despite she's over here, right? But obviously she's the, the, in this position, the place you're actually having impact on the map is this position. Yeah, he's using and seven brain cells. Sort of similar, can spam this position. So literally all six players from the charge are directing their focus at this, at these three players. So. What happens when we unpause? Literally all six of the charge players are like investing. <laughs> when I fall down the stairs, beautiful collapse, really <laughs> beautiful collapse. <laughs> resources into this little corner of the map. And there's only three people here, right? Maybe you could argue like BAP and Widow have some sort of game impact on, on vice versa, but against Rally, that's certainly gonna overwhelm. Crucially, Void is not with the team. So Void is on an off angle right now, which means that Fearless is gonna have a much harder time tanking uh, when the team pushes him as a group. So this is just a touch by charge to get the overtime whip burning. Rio, you can see, keeps touching. He's making sure to just keep overtime going. And even though Charge didn't have to push across this map, right, to this position, 
like even though they didn't actually do that shanghai makes the correct play here like they could not hold on to this ground with the rally and with everyone committed over here so because shanghai backs off instead of doing what might have been the initial plan which was fight on this right side with your whole team then charge actually takes the focus to point because they know dragons they're rotating back they're in these awkward they're in like a corner this is like not a good position for them and the concave is is better now for um significantly better now for the charge the reason the concave is better is because basically the one angle for dragons to touch point is this ramp right here right and because it's only this one ramp it's extremely easy 42 and 6 for the fall for happy to a get an isolated angle that only sees the ramp i mean dm can do the same thing right but dm is shooting at he has like a more awkward target selection you know uh, uh whereas happy has a really straightforward game here basically the Genjis are dueling, so they're not really doing anything. But but the, the key thing here is that Charge, they're creating a concave. And another critical theme that we've seen time and time again on Ilios is that Krong and Chara are working together as this two-man wrecking crew. And the rally just puts that into overdrive. Like, you're so strong. A Sigma with a rally next to you, you're just, you're like a god. You cannot be stopped. So Fearless does come to contest point here, but he's already low. There's no rally. And like, the, the HP lead is really significant right now for the charge and now i mean they're just in a corner like yes this pick comes through nice headshot by happy but this is just rally being stronger than window even if you don't get the chance to press w just because the overall tankiness of your crew is so harder you can end up spamming them i don't really agree with the the, the windowing on the window either as much i think it's okay but it's not a great but it just windows better than the bongo breaks immediately so they could just press w and rally is better than windows so you can take more space away halted as well by and now it's like it's like a cascade like now it forces them in a bad spot and because they're in a bad spot they're gonna lose so but like this corner it just looks terrible right not only does the bap like what does the bap even see here like this is so awkward you know what i mean like the bap doesn't want to be where he is but he's scared to walk anywhere else because happy's watching the sideline this fight just looks so awkward and kronk's in such good position but where did it all come from if we rewind back in time it came from the fact that the charge used their rally and kronk to overwhelm this right side and force the enemy into the corner it came because they used the rally and because fearless beef is bongo I if they'd had bongo bongo plus window would have kept rally at bay but they, they messed it up i feel like reviewing kronk i end up talking like a ton about the team play but that is the nature of sigma guys it's, it really is about the team play how you take map control and how that aids your team and at this point it's just clean up mode this is a free fight the problem with window widow is it, it literally puts your widow in a leash which you don't want to do It's not bad. It's just, you know, it's not the best thing in the world. Kronk is, like, the, the biggest thing I want you to take home from this, is, if you're watching this at home, is that Kronk's not doing anything, like, really. We're watching this at home. That was That is, like, totally sick, and, like, you can't do this. Like, no, you're not good enough to make these plays. Like, there's been some nice rocks, and, like, he's had some big flicks and stuff, sure. A couple of those. But the meat of this game, like, 80-plus percent of this gameplay is literally just game sense and, like, making the right decisions at the right moment. Being yeah. very... Same thing as Charles Brig. Map ...and how he uses his resources. So if you can master those two things, efficient cooldown rotation, which basically means poke, shield, poke, shield. When your shield's low, you throw in a kinetic grasp. Or sorry, when your shield and your HP is low, then you throw a kinetic grasp in. Then hopefully you have a little bit more shield and a little bit more HP cycling. And just using your, your shield and your HP as like interchangeable resources and the kinetic grasp as a last resort and the rock as something that you basically don't use unless an enemy forces a fight on you. Those cooldown usages, it's really not that complicated. But what makes Krong so effective is that he's doing those, he's in the perfect position at the perfect moment. Like he's knowing when to attack the right part of the map. It's also because he's working with Chara to become a lot stronger when he's fighting these flanks. So a hero like Genji is like a non-factor in challenging the Sigma. Don't spoil Chara the versatility. I'll check the patch notes in just a second. Once again, Krong in a nice discipline angle here. These pokes are very conservative, so he doesn't actually take damage. This is a more aggressive angle, actually, but okay, it's because he wants to ult. Tries to ult comp. That's the bad bad flex i mean i guess your widow could have followed up on it but yikes damage this is a more aggressive angle actually but okay it's because he wants to ult tries the halt combo there but it's beautiful it's actually a really nice split from shanghai okay this is your moment this is your moment oh my god that was almost there happy is kind of carrying but shanghai did a great split there but i just don't think it matters that pick from happy like i like how he always tries to use this amp matrix like when possible dm has to go in and die so this is just all snowballing basically from that early pick let us back but you know the player advantage is a little extreme right now both supports both tanks stayed alive the entire fight it's a really nice fight we can watch that final fight again maybe get a little little moderate living from this let's watch the start of the fight i want to watch okay it, what went wrong really is that the hull didn't catch anybody right or wait what happened it broke on the sigma
That hall looked like it was gonna get somebody, but it didn't. What? Shielded the hall. He shielded the hall and then bashed out, yeah. At the moment, it popped. I think it must have been. Void broke the LOS. Right? It's a big play by Lee Jagong. Void Void just gonna break the LOS, that's not surprising, but. Oh, it's because he shielded it. He also got out of it with a shield bash, but he also sh if the if the halt got him, he would have died for sure, I think, or gotten picked up. He probably wouldn't have died, but whatever. That doesn't matter too much. Pretty impressive fight though. I do think it, it, it does matter a lot, but okay. Is happy's pick, though. Let's, <laughs> just for fun, let's watch this. Because uh. I think Fleta has a blade and he dies. Oh god, don't tell me it was that. Okay, it's not that at least. Oh god, he's so good, dude. Yeah, sorry, Fleta, dude. If Fleta has his blade here, like I don't even know if if. I don't even know if dragons win it, man. Honestly, or if charge win it. Like that fight was super winnable for for dragons. They have first rally as well. Just came out now, but. Well, beautiful stuff here from Krong. He's the focus of our review. Nice gameplay from him. Very consistent, static gameplay. But if you watch this, guys, like there's a couple moments, yes, where Krong hit the big flicks, but it's just most of all, it's his map positioning and the way he utilizes his teammates. That's just the most important thing on. I would say tanks in general, but you're like Sigma, that's especially true. Alright, well, thanks for tuning in to this review. Okay, so I'll give that a beefed. Give it a beefed. I think he had a good, decent understanding of the meta and his execution of like communicating was pretty, was pretty good. Um, no, no real feedback. I think it was, it was fine. Nothing, nothing super special, but just fine.